Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have been meditating on various themes on Lent these days. On the sixth day of Lent, I would like to draw your attention to the Gospel according to St. John chapter 13 verses from 1 till 20 where the mention of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples is made. And I would like to see to it from the perspective of leadership. My meditation as Jesus washing the feet, transcending the obvious models of leadership. In the geographic context of first century Palestine, walking on muddy roads with sandals makes it imperative that feet be washed before a meal. Usually people reclined on a low table for dining and feet were very much in evidence. Hence it was a necessary as well as a customary act. The Old Testament passages such as Genesis chapter 18, chapter 19, chapter 24, Judges chapter 19, 1 Samuel chapter 25, 2 Samuel chapter 11, Song of Solomon chapter 5, and also Psalms 58 verse 10 show that the washing of feet was the first act on entering a tent or a house after a long journey. The presence of six stone water jars recorded in the second chapter of John's Gospel is an indication of the custom of washing of feet in the Jewish context. In most of the houses, the host furnishes water and the guests are expected to wash their own feet. But in the richer houses, washing was done by slaves since it was looked down upon as the lowliest of all services. In the supper room situation, there was evidently nobody there to wash the feet of the disciples. Suddenly, none of the disciples were going to wash feet because they have already been arguing over who is going to be the best in the kingdom and who is going to have the highest seat. It was in such a state Jesus does this job, the lowliest one. He washed their feet. Here Jesus is constructing a new model of leadership by opting a path that the existing and prevalent leadership models never dared to. The confinement of ourselves within the set limits of our position and status will always constrain our movement. Since we are aware and to some extent we enjoy our social roles and positions, attempting something which is beyond the obvious has always been unfavored. But Jesus does feet washing act with true consciousness and evaluation. By addressing himself as Lord and Teacher in chapter 13 verse 13, Jesus clarifies that he is conscious of who he is and what is the societal expectation of him. It is important to grasp that taking up a role which is considered low or set apart for the weak does not label one as weak. You should wash one another's feet, chapter 13 verse 14, is more a command than an instruction. In the ancient world, humility was despised as a sign of weakness and hence Jesus' command was revolutionary in the sphere of human relationships. Here Jesus is suggesting a leadership pattern that would do first before commands. A leader's volunteer involvement in any task before the followers are assigned is one thing expected of this model. In addition, the do command model validates the qualification of the leader. In other words, the leader is not questioned about his right to command. The present socio-political scenario is answerable about their right to rule or command in relation to the few policies they made. The policy makers and commanders mostly do things without proper understanding of the beneficiaries, especially in economic sector, and hence the leadership model today are facing questions even about their qualifications. Secondly, Jesus is suggesting a leadership pattern that understands humility as the base of action. Removal of his outer robes and tying of a towel around himself shows that he is doing it not for the sake of it, but by identifying himself as the one commanded to do. Nothing prevents this leader who is teacher and lord to be called a servant or rather a slave. He chose to serve them in the outfit of a servant. This model exhorts us to remove our outer robes such as our positions, designations, legacies, etc. These outer robes can minimize the effect of service we extend. 
it's about a complete transition of mind for service without being considering ourselves as low service is not to be understood as something destined to do but should be found as something that brings change in our destination and finally jesus is suggesting a leadership pattern that expects rejection and retribution when jesus quotes the scriptural statement mentioned in psalm 41:9 the one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me he vehemently states that there lies rejection as a prelude to the revelation of his glory moreover he is well aware of the mentality of his followers at two instances he states it well when peter expresses his submissiveness to jesus by resisting the act that jesus proceeds to do jesus brings in the fellowship aspect he would be establishing in chapter 13 verse 8 then the very expressive peter asks his leader for a washing of his head too now the whole idea of feet washing is well revealed to him by pointing the cleanliness of mind which qualifies peter the intention and mentality of peter as a true submissive fearless person is well read by this leader in relation to judas jesus dares to say that not all of you are clean chapter 13 verse 11 at a later stage he even says directly to judas about the mistrust that is unexpected from a follower the ability to know the details of the followers and their intention is well exhibited in this leadership besides this leadership model does not try for a perfect unblemished result for service the possibility of rejection and betrayal is well incorporated it is the knowledge that matters with a leader knowledge of the arena knowledge of the followers knowledge of the actions and intentions it may not be wrong to see that the present leadership models to a good extent are unwelcome to rejections and criticisms in the course of establishing powerful empires with efficient leadership skills true sense of being a leader is lost a leader may turn out as an emperor but his or her subjects may not feel secured and valued it's not about becoming a taskmaster or an arrogant dictator or one expecting victory alone a distinct and unique approach to leadership is what jesus shows a leadership that does before demands that humbles before gets scale that welcomes rejection before removal may this lenten season help us to retrospect on the kind of leadership we exhibit and expect let us pray lord it is true that i counted myself as a better leader the appreciation received has made me joyful and sometimes to boast but i realize that i am unworthy as i couldn't stay firm on the path you showed guide me o lord that i may take your road and be one in whom others may see amen